Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan, and today I'm going to be doing my latest 2020 NHL Draft Lottery Simulation. So for today's mock draft simulation, we're going to be going on Tankathon.com, simming the top 15 of the NHL draft to see who will get the top three picks in the 2020 draft this time around. Last time I did my top 31 picks, and I'll likely make a part two to this video doing those picks and maybe the second round as well. But I found that in the last video, some of the picks were a little bit rushed because I had to make them very quick to actually get the video out. So I didn't spend as much time actually making the picks. Today, though, it's going to be a lot different. I analyzed a lot of these picks, and it's kind of crazy how the lottery actually ended up. So, which teams actually get into the top three, and where do I see the top 15 prospects going in the 2022 NHL Draft? Watch till the end for all my picks and predictions, and of course, hit that subscribe button if you're new. Now, you guys know the drill. We went through Tankathon.com and sinned the lottery, and these are the final results. Now, I swear, every time I do this, it just ends up crazy, and this is easily the craziest simulation that we've done so far. The Florida Panthers moving up first overall, Minnesota moving up nine spots, number two, Anaheim two spots, number three, Detroit number four, Ottawa with their two picks, LA number seven, New Jersey number eight, Buffalo number nine, and Montreal number 10, and the list goes on. But Florida moving up to number one, and Minnesota number two automatically makes it crazy town. But the Florida Panthers with a 1.5% chance to move up to the first overall pick do in this simulation. And you know what that means. For the Florida Panthers, they will select first overall, Alexi Lafreniere. Now, Florida is in some bad need of defense, I would think, but I don't think they would say no to the first overall pick at the very least. Now, if Florida gets number one, they might end up trading down or something, but Alexi Lafreniere is too good to pass up. We're not doing any trades in this simulation, so number one will be Alexi Lafreniere as always. Going on now to the second overall pick, and this is pretty much a perfect place for the Minnesota Wild. Even though they don't get Alexi Lafreniere, they're in a position to take either Quinton Byfield or Tim Stutzla, a number one center, both of them, I think, for the Minnesota Wild for the future. But at this spot, I think they do take Quinton Byfield. Even though I think it would be pretty close between the two, Byfield, I think, just fits more of the Minnesota mold, being big, being strong, and also having the potential to play a very great physical game, also defensive I think he has potential there too. But in terms of first overall potential, Quinton Byfield I think has the closest to Alexi Lafreniere. But Byfield is a guy that I think will just be dominant at the NHL level. And I think Minnesota is a team that also can give patience to Byfield as well to make him into the best player he can be. But now going on to the third overall pick and the Anaheim Ducks, and at this spot I was kind of contemplating if they would go for Jamie Drysdale since defensively in that prospect pool they pretty much have nothing, but at this spot I still think they select Tim Stutzla. Now again, that's a team that I don't think even needs that much more center depth in the prospect pool, but if they have a chance at a guy like Stutzla, I think they do take it, and at number three it's pretty much a perfect spot for them. At this spot though, Stutzla is one of the best European prospects in this draft, the best German easily, and a guy that I think can alongside Trevor Zegras, be a transforming player for the Ducks. And then going on to the Detroit Red Wings at at number four overall pick, and this is kind of the worst situation to be at. They dropped number four, and Tim Stutzla is off the board for them. But at this spot, I still think they go for a center, and that center will be the Austrian stud, Marco Rossi. Now, I think for Detroit, it's between Rossi and Raymond, but I think Rossi is a guy that has some serious potential to go top five in this draft. And for a team like Detroit, you could have a top two center core of Larkin and Rossi as soon as next season. And I'll so you could have Joe Valeno as a third line center coming up for the ranks. But now going to the Ottawa Senators and their back-to-back -back picks here at number five and number six. And I'm just going to go through it right now. Number five, I think, will be Lucas Raymond. And number six, with the San Jose pick, just to put salt in the wound, will be Jamie Drysdale. I think Ottawa is in a position to take the two best players available at the draft at that spot. And Pierre Dorian has said he wants to take the best players available, whether that's a forward or whether that's a defenseman. And I think at number five and number six, they go for the forward, they go for the defenseman to really create a solid draft already. And even though it would kind of be the worst case scenario for them to drop to number five and number six, getting Lucas Raymond and Jimmy Drysdale is just absolutely nasty. Now going on to the seventh overall pick and the LA Kings, and this is kind of the worst position for them to be in. They drop down three spots and all three of Drysdale, Raymond, and Rossi are off the board. So I don't think there's any guy that is a clear cut favorite at this spot, but I think they will go for a little bit of a reach, a little bit of a reach here and select Jake 
Sanderson. Now, I think Alexander Oltz also has a great chance to be selected here, but LA is a team that is in some bad need of defensive depth in the prospect pool. The last time they selected a defenseman with their first pick in the draft was Kale Clegg back in 2016. And even though I like Tobias Bjornfutt, I like a guy like Sean Dursey, they're in some bad need of a guy who can absolutely shut it down, which for a guy like Jake Sanderson, even though I don't like him as a top 10 prospect, that factor is certainly there. And I think the only reason that he is selected number seven is because the chance of him being selected after that also is very high. You have New Jersey, you also have Buffalo, you have Montreal, Chicago, all four of which I could totally see taking Alex Anderson and actually having a pretty good fit there. So I think LA would want to risk that and go for him at number seven, which leads us to the eighth overall pick and the New Jersey Devils here. And this is one that will be super fascinating, but I think in the end, they will select Alexander Holtz. Again, I think the potential is there to select a guy like Jake Sanderson, but at number eight, they take the sniper in Holtz, which in my opinion right now has the potential to be the best goal scorer in the entire draft. Then going on to the number nine overall pick in the Buffalo Sabres, and at this spot, I think they clear-cut take Cole Perfetti. Cole Perfetti, I think, is a pretty interesting fit for the Buffalo Sabres, and a pretty common one, I would say. Even though there is potential for him to go higher in this draft, I could also see him dropping a little bit due to the concerns over his skating, but Perfetti is still a guy that has some wonderful hockey IQ, some great skills as well, and I think for the Buffalo Sabres, will translate pretty well. You have a future going there in the forward group of guys like Dylan Cousins, and now adding Cole Perfetti, that's not bad whatsoever. Now going into the 10th overall pick in the Montreal Canadiens, and they're kind of all over the place because I could see them taking so many different players, but at this spot, I think they will select Anton Lindell. Lindell, I think, is a pretty interesting fit for the Montreal Canadiens, a guy who I think can be one of the best defensive players in the NHL someday, but a guy that is also sneaky offensively, and the hockey IQ is one of the best of this draft. That's a player, though, that for the Montreal Canadiens, they do need left wingers, and he can play on that left wing that is his second position, but he could also play center as a shutdown role and pretty much be the second coming of a guy like Jonathan Taves or Miku Koivu, a guy that can shut down opposing offenses, which for the Montreal Canadiens, they badly need. Now going to the 11th spot in the Chicago Blackhawks, and I think this is where the best goalie of the draft, Yaroslav Eskarov, ends up dropping. For the Chicago Blackhawks, they don't really have anything in the prospect pool goalie-wise besides a guy like Kevin Gravel and Lincoln, and I guess. But especially if Robin Leonard going to the Vegas Golden Knights, I think the chances of Chicago drafting a goaltender are super high. And especially for Chicago going back to the 11th overall pick, I think Eskarov is the perfect fit for them. Now going to the 12th overall pick and the New Jersey Devils via the Arizona Coyotes. And this is a pick that I think will be super fascinating. It depends on what they pick at number eight, but since they ended up selecting Alexander Holtz, I think in this spot they will go for defenseman and that will be Braden Schneider. Now I don't think Braden Schneider is worth a 12th overall pick or even a top 20 pick, but if you're going to pick a solid shutdown defenseman, Braden Schneider is definitely up there with a guy like Jake Sanderson in my opinion. A guy that I think can be a very solid, steady two-way guy who can chip in offensively as well, but when it comes to New Jersey, besides Ty Smith, besides maybe even Kevin Ball, the defensive system is not all too great, but Braden Schneider would definitely beef it up a bit. Now going to the 13th overall pick and the Winnipeg Jets, and at this spot, I think they will select Ottawa OHLer Jack Quinn. Now I think the potential of Jack Quinn going higher in this draft is certainly there, but I think he might drop a little bit, and I think for the Winnipeg Jets, it's a perfect fit. A guy that can be an offensive dynamo. You pair him uh, maybe on a line with Patrick Laine, Mark Shifley, and then you have Quinn on the right side potentially. That is absolutely nasty. He might just have the best shot of the draft, and for the Winnipeg Jets, that's a player that they can certainly develop. Now going on to the 14th overall pick and the New York Rangers, and I think they would ideally want to go for a center, but with Perfetti and Lindell gone, I think they will have to settle for a winger, and they'll have to settle for Seth Jarvis. Now, settling for Seth Jarvis is pretty good, in my opinion. Absolutely dominant in the second half of the WHL. I think just like Jack Quinn has the potential to go even higher, but if Seth Jarvis is available for New York, I really don't see them passing up on him. Now going on to the 15th spot in the NHL draft with the Columbus Blue Jackets, and I think they will be the team to select Caden Gooley. Now I think Columbus also would really want a guy like Braden Schneider, but there is going to be a lot of teams out there that will want a guy like Caden Gooley, and I could so totally see him going inside maybe even the top 12 of this draft, but Columbus is a team that prioritizes physicality, prioritizes size, and defensive skills, and Caden Gooley can bring that. Although I really don't see too much upside in a pick like that 
for a team like Columbus, they're already very solid, and when it comes to pure guys that can be a top six defenseman, Kane and Gooley is a pretty solid bet. But those are my picks for the top 15 of this simulation. Of course, if you guys want to see me do more of this with the part two or even into the second round, make sure you let me know in the comments down below. And one of the best ways to do it also is to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Of course, comment down below all your thoughts on my picks, what you agree and disagree with, and who do you see these players and where do you see them going in this simulation. Of course, I'll see you guys next video. Make sure you share it, get the word out there, and click this card right here to watch all of my 2021 NHL draft content right in one playlist. My name is Nathan, and I'll see you guys next video or stream. Goodbye.